Hi there. It's been a while, and it's good to be back. Before we get started, did you know you can find this podcast on Twitter? Just go to twitter.com slash the L Romantic. That's twitter.com slash the L Romantic. Welcome to the Lesbian Romantic Podcast. This is The Diva Story, Part 1. The Diva Story, Part 1, Prologue. How long is this going to take? Hannah asked. Her mother sighed. Hannah, please. You sound like a teenager. Hannah knew it would prove her mother's point. But she still rolled her eyes dramatically. I saw that, her mother said. Hannah couldn't help but smile. Her mother was right, she knew. At 33, she was too old to be acting this way. But Hannah really, really didn't want to be here. She looked around the large hall. It had been her father's favorite place in the whole darn world, as he used to say. Still, Hannah had never felt any fondness for the building. Not as a kid and definitely not as an adult. Hannah thought it was a pompous place for pompous people. Evidence to support her claim wasn't hard to find. The red carpets and shiny golden chandeliers of the place paled in comparison to the bejeweled women making their way up the stairs, holding on to their tuxedo husbands or lovers, Hannah's own mother, Lucille, sure looked the part tonight. She always did. Lucille was wearing a beautiful, deep green evening gown and frighteningly high stiletto heels to go with it. The only difference was she wasn't accompanied by a husband. Her arm was linked with Hannah's. At least, it was tonight. Since Hannah's father had passed away almost 15 years ago, her mother had come here alone. Lucille had pleaded with her daughter to join her tonight. As a farewell gift, she had said. It would be the last time Lucille would walk up these stairs for a long time. Maybe ever. Still, Hannah had not immediately agreed to come. Her mother had had to ask several times. Now that she was here, with Lucille's hand clamped around her upper arm, Hannah felt a pang of guilt. It suddenly felt cruel to have let her mother come here alone for all these years. It couldn't have been easy for Lucille. It sure was hard for Hannah. When she had first stepped into the grand foyer thirty minutes ago, she had had to swallow the tears away. The memories of her father had washed over her and tugged at her heart. It must be even harder for her, Hannah thought. She glanced sideways at her mother. Lucille was looking around with an air of dignity and belonging. Still, Hannah's mother was fed up with New York City life. She would be returning to her home country, Belgium, for her retirement in a few months, leaving Hannah behind to run their successful chocolate business. Lucille's decision had surprised Hannah. 
She had been to Brussels a couple of times to visit relatives. And she simply could not imagine her glamorous mother living in that strange city so far away. But Lucille had been sure this was what she wanted by the time she had told her daughter. I have an iPhone and an iPad. I'll be just one touch away, Lucille had said. And so she would leave New York City soon. But not before attending one last performance in this memory-filled concert hall. It was now late May, and the last production of the season was opening tonight. I always miss him when I'm here, Lucille suddenly said, quietly. Hannah pulled her mother a bit closer. Yeah, me too, she said. Lucille smirked. Honey, you never come here. Hannah shook her head a little. Why do you think that is? She said. Lucille looked up and met her gaze. Is that why you stay away? I thought you just hated opera. Hannah grinned at her mother. Oh, I do. I really do hate opera. Lucille smiled. And then playfully rolled her eyes. Let's find our seats. Yeah. So, do you still hate it? Or did you enjoy it a bit more? Lucille asked, sounding surprisingly hopeful. Hannah was switching her phone back on. Um, she hesitated. I guess it was less horrible than it used to be. That one singer was... nice. Did they change something? Her mother laughed. Honey... Opera hasn't changed. Maybe you have. Hannah typed in her password. Well, I haven't changed that much then. I still think it was too darn long and too dramatic. I mean, there's not much subtlety to be found in these stories, is there? Ah, oh, but there is, Lucille said, while pushing herself up from her seat. You just don't see it or hear it, dear. You're not open to it. Hannah glanced at her mother. Lucille's bright blue eyes were fixed on her. There was no judgment in them, though. Just warmth. Hannah tucked her phone away in the inner pocket of her blazer before she got up. This was an important night for her mother. They wouldn't get to spend a lot of time together in the future. Better make the most of it now. She smiled. Want to have a drink and tell me what I'm missing? Hannah asked. She was making an effort. Lucille's lips curved up, tiny wrinkles appearing at the corners of her eyes. I'd like that very much, she replied. I actually need to talk to you about something. Hannah tilted her head. Okay, do you want to go to some place in the neighborhood or... Lucille pointed at the bar in the foyer. Let's sit over there. I'm sure they'll have a table for us. Hannah shrugged. Fine by me. She followed her mother to the bar. It had about 20 tables, only separated from the rest of the lobby by some plants and velvet ropes. Most of the tables were occupied by the same pompous couples Hannah had seen before. This place really did make her feel uncomfortable. 
she would have rather left and found some cozy spot nearby. But if her mom preferred this bar, it would have to do. Good evening. Please follow me. They were shown to a table nearby the impressively large windows. The waiter helped Lucille with her chair, and she nodded gratefully at him. We'll have two glasses of Veuve Clicquot, she said. Of course, ma'am. Hannah rested her chin on her right hand. We celebrating something tonight? She asked. Lucille was playing with the emerald ring on her left hand. Hannah's father had given it to her not too long before he suddenly passed away. Yes, dear. Life is about to change a great deal for both of us. Hannah straightened up. I'm ready to take over the business, mother, she said, full of confidence. Lucille folded her hands on the table. I know you are. Hannah looked up as the waiter arrived with their two glasses of champagne. She picked up her glass and raised it as soon as he had left. I hope you will be happy in Belgium, Mom. Lucille lifted her own drink in the air. I know I will be. Tout sera bien. And I trust you will be fine here too. Hannah smiled at the delicate sound of their crystal glasses clinking. For a brief second, she was truly happy for her mother. Hannah would miss having her around, but she had noticed her mom seemed a lot more relaxed since she had decided to leave. Now, Hannah, there's a reason I invited you here tonight. Lucille said after taking a sip of champagne. Okay, Hannah replied, leaning forward. As you know, your father loved this opera company, Lucille said. Hannah nodded slowly. Lucille pursed her lips. And you know he started the foundation to support young talent. Hannah nodded again. The foundation had been her father's pride and joy, and its continued existence had been a specific wish in his will. Lucille put down her glass. I have taken over his duties since he passed away. Hannah arched an eyebrow. Her mother was so busy with all sorts of charities, Hannah had never become aware of any specific activities related to her father's foundation. Lucille reached over the table and grabbed Hannah's hand. Now, it's your turn to honor your father's wishes, dear. Hannah's eyes widened. She swallowed her champagne with a difficulty. Excuse me, she said, clearing her throat. Her mother stared at her with a serious expression. You need to take over these responsibilities now that I am moving back to Europe. Hannah rubbed her chin. She didn't like where this was going. The foundation supported young opera singers, and Hannah wanted absolutely nothing to do with opera. She had not inherited her parents' love for the art form. At all. I don't understand. What responsibilities? She finally said. Lucille pulled back her hand and shifted in her seat. Not that many, really. You have to attend certain events now and then. The foundation staff handles the rest. Hannah glared at her mother. You know I hate those type of events. Lucille sucked in her lips. Mom. Hannah pushed some strands of hair that had escaped back behind her ear and stubbornly stared at her glass. After a while, her mother spoke up again. The foundation carries your name, Hannah. It's time to take responsibility. Hannah scowled. The remark hurt her. 
she knew she was still a bit. Well, she always called herself young at heart. But Hannah had never shied away from hard work and commitments. As a kid, Hannah had often helped out in her mother's store. By the time she was 15, she was spending every spare moment working for her mother. And once she had graduated, she had helped her mom grow the business into the impressive retail chain it was now. Hannah met her mother's gaze. I always worked hard, she stammered, her voice a bit unstable. Yes, you did. Lucille immediately replied. But you've always pretended we were any other family. Small business owners who worked hard and got lucky. But we aren't, Hannah. Your father was a very important man. This gave you and me plenty of opportunities other people couldn't dream of. Hannah sighed. She had heard this speech many times before, and she had to admit there was nothing she had ever lacked in her life. But she had always felt like she had earned these opportunities by working hard and by never taking anything for granted. I don't see how spending my time supporting the entertainment industry is taking up responsibility. She said icily. Lucille huffed. Seriously, Hannah. Don't pretend like I'm asking you to become a Broadway mogul. Hannah downed the rest of her glass of champagne. Not exactly charming. But she didn't care right now. She thought of the bottle of amazing Scottish single malt that was waiting for her at home. Hannah glanced at her watch to check the time. She looked back up to see her mother staring at her angrily. Hannah couldn't take it anymore. What kind of events? She relented. Lucille stiffly took a sip of her champagne. Her hand was shaking a bit, Hannah noticed. After she put the glass down again, Hannah's mother said, The opening of the new season... Young artist recitals. Some meetings with the young artist we support. Maybe some interviews together. Hannah clenched her jaw. Press interviews. She hated being in the spotlight at these socialite events. But dealing with the press? That was ten times worse. Oh, there won't be that many. If any at all. Lucille shook her head. The press rarely cares. She looked at Hannah steadily. The most important thing are the meetings with the young artists supported by the Foundation's grant. <sighs> Hannah sighed. What kind of meetings? Her mother was playing with one of the napkins the waiter had put under the glasses. Your father wanted to do more than other patrons. He wanted to be a mentor to these young people, Lucille said. Hannah had no idea what that meant. You have dinner together now and then. Maybe a drink. Attend some of their recitals and opera performances. Help them any way you can. I always enjoyed meeting these artists, to be honest, Lucille said. But... I'm 33, Mom. How can I be a mentor to some super talented opera person? Lucille frowned. Hannah, please. This was really important to your father. Hannah closed her mouth. When her mother said that something had been important to her late father, it basically meant, do not argue with me. Lucille briefly looked around, almost like she wanted to make sure no one could overhear their conversation. Hannah felt her cheeks starting to heat up. 
Was she embarrassing her mother? She felt her chest tighten. Her mother waved at the waiter when she spotted the young man serving a couple two tables away. Another glass? She asked Hannah coolly. Yes, thank you, Hannah said quietly, still feeling the sting of her mother's disapproval. Lucille stuck up two fingers to the waiter and pointed at their glasses. Hannah glanced down at her hands. She hated disappointing her mother. And clearly, this was not something her mother was kidding about. So, Hannah, for the coming two seasons, we support a young lady. Her name is Miss North. She was admitted to the Met Young Talent Development Program, and the Emsworth Foundation pays for her training and stipend. Hannah's mother inspected her perfectly manicured nails. I have not met Miss North personally, she said thoughtfully. I thought it would be best if you took over immediately. Hannah took in a deep breath trying to manage the surge of panic she felt. Out of nowhere, the waiter suddenly put down two new glasses on the table. Hannah waited for him to leave before she asked her next question. So, what do I say to this Miss North mother? I don't know anything about opera. Lucille wrapped her fingers around the long champagne glass. You know a lot about running a business. I'm sure Miss North will find that useful. Being successful in the opera world demands business skills as well as musical talent these days. It does? Hannah asked, rubbing the back of her neck. Yes, it's a business as much as any other thing in this damn world, her mother said. Hannah bit her lap. She still hated the idea, but she guessed she knew enough about running a business to help someone out if she had to. So, when do I have to meet this Miss North? Hannah asked. In a couple of months, August, Lucille replied, her gaze a lot warmer now. I'll have Charlotte coordinate with your assistant to set up the meetings. Hannah frowned and was about to say something, but Lucille raised her finger. She'll book the mandatory engagements, performances, and set up a schedule for your dinners with Miss North. She'll also send you her biography. I suggest you at least read it before you meet her. Hannah crossed her legs under the table. Okay. Lucille smiled. Thank you. This is really important to me, Hannah. This is how you keep your father's legacy alive. He would be so proud to see his daughter walk in his shoes. Hannah's throat was now completely dry. Her mother rarely told her she would have made her father proud. Her success in business certainly never had earned her a remark like this one. Why the hell was this opera thing so important? Let's finish our glasses and head home. I'm getting a bit tired, Lucille said. Hannah nodded and tried to smile. It was her mother's last night at this cursed opera building, after all. Later that evening, Hannah flopped down on the couch after a long and hot shower. She was sniffing her favorite drink. The peaty scent she loved so much easily found its way up her nostrils. She kept the glass resting on her chest with one hand, while she raised her phone with the other. 
She didn't want to think about what she had been forced to agree to tonight. Checking her email would keep her occupied until she was relaxed enough to go to bed. Hannah sipped the whiskey and let it roll around her mouth. She enjoyed the burning feeling it gave her. In the meantime, her thumb automatically scrolled through the long list of emails in her inbox. She had started reading the oldest email first, a habit she had adopted a long time ago, and that saved her from sending a lot of unnecessary emails. Most of her messages tonight were about the new store opening up in Boston in a few months. A quick scan of the updates told her there were no unexpected issues for now. This was the twelfth time in the last five years a new Leroy chocolate store opened, and her team had gotten the hang of it. It had finally become a smooth process, instead of the wild, chaotic adventure it had been with the first three or four stores. She decided she would look at the artwork for the new spring chocolate packaging tomorrow. That task required a fresh and sober mind, and hers was neither. She was about to put away her phone when her eyes fell on the latest email at the top of the list. Seriously, Hannah mumbled. It was almost 1 a.m. Why was her mother's assistant emailing in the middle of the night? A sudden loud purr made Hannah look down. Hey boy, come here. She patted her belly. Her cat Charles gave her a, hell no, look back. Hannah knew there was no use in trying to convince him. And put her glass down on the floor. She scratched Charles's head while she opened the email. The subject line read, Miss North. Hannah frowned. They want me to hang out with some diva, she told Charles. The cat replied with a plaintive meow. Hannah started reading. Dear Miss Emsworth, Here's the information on Miss North your mother wants you to study. Below, you will find her biography, links to her most recent recitals, and some official pictures. Please let me know if you need anything else. I will contact your assistant Susie in August to discuss suitable dates for your first dinner with Miss North. Best regards, Charlotte. Hannah exhaled in frustration. She ignored the PDF file and links under Charlotte's name for now and tapped on the attached picture instead. It opened immediately, and Hannah was surprised to see a stunning young woman in an elegant purple evening gown. Her lips were bright red, her brown eyes filled with emotion, and both of her arms were raised dramatically. Well, at least the drama queen is gorgeous, she confided to Charles. He gave another loud, unhappy squeak. <laughs> Hannah looked at him and giggled. What's wrong? You want to be an opera singer too? Charles stared back at her with his wide yellow eyes and started purring again. Hannah rolled her eyes at her furry friend. She leaned over to grab her drink. She emptied the glass in one big gulp, got up, and started walking towards the bedroom. Come on, let's go to bed, Pavarotti. Woohoo! This really was the first part of the all new The Diva Story. I've been working on this for quite some time, so I'm really curious to find out what you think. And a bit nervous, too, to be honest. If you like this podcast, please leave a review on iTunes. Yes, that's still very important. Or if you'd like to support 
like this podcast, please go to lesbianromantic.com slash, that's forward slash, support. So lesbianromantic.com slash support. See you next week.